Hey guys, welcome to Mrs. G's Sewing Space. I'm Mrs. G and today we're talking about the rope bowls. As you could tell from the thumbnail, this is what we're talking about. I'll get to these in just a second though, but I wanted to show you guys something real quick. When I first started making the bowls, I saw the really cute small ones and so I replicated them as best as I could. So this is one of the first ones that I made, so it's not perfect by any means, but it's super cute and I think it's adorable. It's just those small little bowls, about two and a half inches across here. And I started working my way out and when I got done I just did the little loop right here because I figured that was the best way to end it. So this is like I said about two two inches here, two, two and a half inches across the bottom and then I made a larger one. Now I gave these to my daughter so I didn't take any of their stuff out. So my daughter currently has her tooth fairy money in a and a Lego dinosaur of some sort in pieces here in hers. So this one's just a little bit bigger on the bottom. It's a little flatter here with a smaller edge going up. I use regular craft acrylic paint. Americana is the one I prefer. Uh, use that paint for the inside. It gives it a little stability and makes it a little harder to break and pull apart. And it gives it a pop of color. And I really like that there on the inside. Another one that I made, I tried the, tried the oblong or the, I don't know, oval shape. But I think I made this too narrow here in the bottom. It's more like a bread basket. Ah, maybe I can use it for silverware and stuff like that when I'm setting a table for... Oh, that's brilliant. Why did I not think of that earlier? I was really thinking about what to do with this and now I can use it whenever I have people over. I can just fill it up with silverware. Brilliant. I'm so glad I thought of that just now. So there's that one. But the ones here in the background that I wanted to show you are the bigger ones. This is a rope bowl that I made. It's seven inches on the bottom across here, which makes it pretty decent, a pretty decent size. And the rope that I use, so let me tell you something. There's two kinds of rope out there. There's the actual 100% cotton clothesline rope. It's a little thinner, weaker, limper, drapier than than this, what I use for this one. The clothesline that I use for this one has a polyester core with a cotton cover and I got this on Amazon I got 200 feet it's the Evandale cotton clothesline but it has the it has a solid braided construction with a strong stretch resistant synthetic core so if you go looking for a clothesline and you find the clothesline that has a synthetic core that's just polyester strands on the inside and the cotton strands that wrap around the outside that's what this is made of. So it's a little stiffer, it holds its shape a little better, and I'm not gonna say it's stronger, because I don't know, I haven't really put it to the test yet, but, but I like it because it's a little stiffer, it just holds up a little better. This one is not. It's a little floppier. I, I managed to make it a little wider, I'm not quite sure how I did that, but see how easy it folds? This is actually made out of 100% clothesline 100% cotton clothesline so there's no polyester core in there there's no polyester strands it's it's just all 100% cotton and so it leaves it a little more floppy which I guess if that's something that you're looking for actually I think this would be really good this floppiness I think it would be really good for a like a beach bag where you could have that kind of floppiness and tote a beach, have it in, in a beach bag and tote it with you that way and as you can see here on the outside you can see the different colors and here on the inside is different colors so that's blue just regular blue thread and then red thread so as I was sewing it all up I was using white on these over here and then I was using whatever colors I had so this is like a good way to use up all those extra little thread colors on your thread stand that you may not use anymore or just aren't colors you use very often I would use it for this and then leftovers is coasters so I made I made four coasters that go out on on my table so just to let you know this is 100 yards seven inches in diameter here about I don't know how tall this is about this tall tall as my head and floppiness 100% cotton cording here and it's a it's a decent sized basket but that's that's 100 yards this one is also a hundred yards this one is not 100 yards. I'm not sure how many yards this is. I wasn't keeping track when I made it. And then my little cotton coasters are just, I think this is six to nine feet maybe. Six to nine feet sound like a lot, but when you start twisting it up, it's not a lot. So I'm not, I don't actually remember off the top of my head how much this was. I just kept going until I thought it was a good coaster size. 
Alright, sorry for that break in the video there in my introduction. My camera cut off on me right there. Um, I just wanted to show you that I'm using glue to take care of my frayed ends. Because I'm using a cord with a polyester middle, I can't burn it. Because even though the middle will melt, the cotton will not. It'll just burn. And I didn't want that. So I'm using glue to keep my frayed ends together and keep them from peeling and fraying. I apologize in advance for having my hands in the way. I'm still trying to figure out a good camera position so that you guys can see what I'm doing without my big fat hands being in the way. So when you start out your project, you start out by making a plus sign on those ends right there that holds everything together while you, while you prepare to zigzag everything. So when you finally get your middle done, you turn everything to a zigzag stitch and for each zig and each zag, you should be connecting the two pieces of rope to each other and you're going to have to manually push it through into a circle to make sure that everything stays together but eventually it gets big enough and the machine will do most of the work and you all you have to do is make sure you guide it so that it doesn't not catch something. You can see right here that I'm letting the feed dogs move the clothesline on its own. I'm just guiding everything to make sure that for every zig and zag it's connecting both the clothesline to itself so that you can turn it into a bowl or bag or whatever. But the feed dogs are doing most of the work.
Okay, so this is where when you decide how big the bottom of your bag is going to be, or your basket, you need to lift the bottom up so that it's at a tilt. That's how you get it to curve at the bottom to start making the straight edges so that you actually have a bowl or basket or bag or whatever it is that you're going to make. But you have to push that bottom up so that it's at an angle to where, um, where, that, where you had it before. I apologize right now for the, for the dimness of the video. I'm not sure what was going on with my camera, but every time I moved, it would either get bright or it would get dark, and my lighting did not change at all. Here I am showing you how to make the loop so you can enclose that in space. I just tucked it back into itself. I pinned it in place, and then I just went back over it with more zigzag stitches so that you, it was secure. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you have any comments throw them down below and let me know what else you guys want to see. I have a couple of other projects coming up and I'm doing something slightly different on my next video so I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing you then. Bye!